today we have the all, the new No Way Home Green Goblin figure review. So we're going to be doing a review for this figure. So just setting up the camera straight. We're going to see all about this figure. I'm super happy to have finally have a goblin in my collection cuz this is a green goblin figure has been one of my most wanted things in my collection. I finally got one for Christmas. Uh, if you haven't already go check that haul video and um yeah let's get started so starting off with the packaging i did keep it just for this review we have spider-man no way home four plus hasbro warning don't put it in your mouth um at the bottom we got the barcode there um recycling blah 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 um on the side you get a 3d render of goblin in the front another 3d render looking awesome um that is not real art from the movie that is uh, like fake art same thing with this um, looks pretty cool though, and then here we have the back of the figure with everything that he gets I did kind of rip this but um you get well yeah We'll get into what he gets, but this is everything that he gets to stand blah 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 goblin So yeah, let's take a now. Let's go into the figure So I did already unbox him because I did get this for Christmas and I'm not waiting to do a review for this figure You guys know I love to open my figures as soon as I get them I uh, still have that burnt mark there. So um, yeah so taking i already have him on the glider so i'm actually gonna take him uh we'll just keep him like this actually for now but doing this and you can see the face the will and defoe head sculpt looks amazing like just looking at the figure before we go in depth of it the detail on the figure is just insane so yeah now let's take off we're gonna go ahead and take off the uh goggles and we'll see okay so taking him off the glider you could see this is like this looks so good we'll go in depth in the figure but first let's look at the head sculpt with the hood so you can see the green and the skin underneath there just a little bit but um i think it looks fine and you can look at the back you kind of can see the skin through the hoodie but um the hood as well looks very nice it's got some like rips in there it looks like it's got some stitch marks um and yeah it's just a pretty basic hood so that looks pretty good and then taking off the hood taking off the hood you can see here we have the goggles they got some nice purple um paint on the front there and it wraps all around the head sculpt here so this looks good now taking off the goggles if i can get that off thank you oh this looks i can't like i don't know what else to say this looks exactly like willem dafoe i think this is one of the best head sculpts that marvel legend has ever done that hasbro has ever done i should say but yeah that just that looks so much like him and i saw the sh figure arts i don't have that figure because i'd rather get this one that sh figure arts it does not like what is with the mustache like, this one, you could see he's got, like, a bit of a mustache, but it's not as overdone as, like, say, SH Figure Wars. Now, the Hot Toys one looks good, but I'm not paying $500 for that, but, um, or whatever. Is it $500? Let me know, guys. But, um, yeah, this looks great. They used the digital face printing, and you could just see the smirk, like, the teeth. It just, it looks, like, so much like Goblin. Oh, I love it. Willem Dafoe, man. And is that a paint wash in the hair? I'm not sure. It might be like a light bright or a light dry brushing in there, but that looks good as well. And then moving on into the torso, you could see he has the tattered hood, and this looks really good. This is a rubber overlay that you put that you that is over the figure. Now you can take this off. I've seen other people do it, but you have to like pop off the head, go through there, and then go through the the um, the arm because it's connected there. But it's like, you have to get through this and then this, so that looks like a lot of work, so I'm not going to do it. Plus, I don't want to damage my figure accidentally, so we're just going to look at it like this. But it does have lots of nice rips and sculpting details. So, yeah, I think this looks great. Yeah, I love this. Like, it's just tattered up hood, and then um, moving down into the torso or in the arms. So you see he has, like, some rocket. Is that rockets or is that, like, just ammo? I don't know, but... He's also got another part of his hood there tattered up. And then he's got the green paint they use. I actually really like the green paint they use for the entire body. I have the glider thing on there. I don't know why I had that. But I love the green paint they use for this body. And you can see they actually painted this figure very well. Like they painted almost everything. Like even on the back as well they painted stuff. And you know Hasbro. They do not like to paint stuff on the back. So like 
like this stuff right here they would not normally do but they it, they actually did it so that's pretty cool now i didn't paint everything like right there and stuff but um they painted most of the stuff for the most part and then we do have this other overlay piece here in the torso which is the um the belt here so i think this looks good you can move it around so you can see it's an overlay but you do have some nice silver paint on the things same up here silver paint on the arm you could see now it is sculpted there the um the hoodie but they did not paint it there because it would most likely get chipped off just because that's like where you move the figure so it'd be chipped off because of the movement and then on this arm we have the rockets and stuff and i think that looks really good you got some nice golden paint and then on this arm we have the blades which we'll get into this later a little bit later but the blades kind of piss me off i'm not gonna lie but um yeah he does get the blades and he's got some more like armored plates and then battle damage up here you can see like you got the tear of in his, in his suit and you got a nice like a lot of nice gold and purple paint and silver paint all throughout the figure like right there i think he took correct me if i'm wrong in the comments guys but i think he took parts of his um glider which we will get into the glider um oh that just fell but um in his, from his glider and then he put it onto his suit i don't know why he did that we'll set the glider right there but i think that is what happened you get some nice black paint for the belt buckle and then the pouch is kind of um it looks kind of cool i guess that's where he holds his pumpkin bombs that would make the most sense um and then yeah so he's got a not a lot of nice paint um and then, uh, not so nice, like, he's got some paint, like, um, plates, plate, plates, I guess you call it, but I don't know. But, uh, again, more rockets on this arm, and then moving into the legs, you've got, like, you could see, like, the mesh underneath his suit that got ripped off, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then you could see he's got some more gold, silver plates, um, and I kind of like how the, this, like, the suit's kind of, like, a bit asymmetrical. You don't really get that, um, but, like, so with some figures, so I kind of like that. And, um, well, I, I guess it's not with the figures, but for the design of the costume. But, again, I did mention that paint, um, so that is nice. They did paint it, and it's got kind of, like, a rusty, rusted look. And, um, I do like, I, I, I said paint earlier, but it's not a paint, more as, it's just, like, casted in that color, the, um, the green but it does look nice. He got some nice um, silver um, kneecaps, I guess you'd call that. And then some more gold stuff right down here. Like um, goldish, yellowish plates down here for the shins. And then the angles. And then at the feet, uh, peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So yeah, this figure, I mean, you could honestly, I, I kind of cut this short. But you could go on for on this figure for days. Like the, there's a sculpting everywhere. Like, just the rivets in it, and then, like, all the plate work and sculpting. And the texture on this figure, I really love the texture. So, honestly, you can go on about this figure forever, but we're, I'm not going to go that. I'm not going to make this video too long, I hope. But now, let's get into accessories. Okay, starting off with accessories. Well, we already kind of took a look at the hood. So, I do, I do think this looks good. It's got, like, the little point at the end there, and it's just a basic hood that you can put over the head and i think it looks pretty good now uh again we went over the goggles as well but it's just a basic strap here that you put over the figure's head and it's got uh some nice purple paint on the goggles but now let's get into some new stuff so we actually he actually does come with a pumpkin bomb only one and this thing is so freaking tiny like i know you've probably heard other youtubers if you're watching this you probably heard other youtubers say it's tiny because like and I, I didn't think it'd be this tiny, but it's freaking tiny. And it's got some nice sculpting work on there, but only one little bit of paint. It could have used, like, a metallic, rusty um, dry brush over it, but you do have the green uh, dot there. And mine is a little bit off-centered, you could see. I didn't actually notice until I looked at the camera. But, yeah, and you can take the figure, and he has this one open hand. And once you click this in, like, listen to this. Like, that is not coming out. Like, you can get it out with your fingers. I can't even do it on camera, but, like, it, it's going to take a little bit to get the um, thing out. But, yeah, that is nice. So, you can have him holding that, and I think that looks pretty good. Now, the big boy accessory. Look at this. Oh, that is 
so freaking cool. The, um, the, um, what's it called? The goblin, the Spider-Man 1 goblin face. Like, this, like, mask. Like, this is insane. The sculpting on this is insane. I love the ears, like, pointing up. And it's got, like, the, the, um, paint, or the plate work going up, um, into the skull. And then he's got the nice point at the back. And he's got some nice golden paint, or those horrible yellow eyes, as Aunt May would say. And the nose, like, just the sculpting work of this is, is this, it's just sheer insanity. Like, this just looks so awesome. And then he does have some nice silver paint for the, um, for the teeth. My, and it does have some marbling in the plastic. This is, like, kind of a marbled plastic, so you do get some lines going out throughout the, the head. But that is kind of annoying, but... I didn't really notice it until I looked at it up front in the camera. So you don't really notice it. And then you do, if you guys can see that, I don't know if you how well you can see it on camera, but you could see like the mesh that he used uh, for this for the screening for his like for his mouth. Like you could see. I don't know how well I can get that in on camera, but you could see the dots and it. It looks like mesh. The shadowy is really bad, but like. Oh, that just looks so cool, the mesh. And, oh, I love that. Like, that is such a cool detail. And if we take a look back at our figure, you can pop off the Willem Dafoe head sculpt. And this is an extra head. And I know he did not do the, he did not wear this in the movie. But you can't tell me that. Am I getting it on? Yeah. <laughs> You cannot tell me that this does not look freaking gorgeous. Oh, that's so good looking. Did I get this on popped right? Popped on right? But yeah, that is freaking insane. This looks so good. I'm so glad to finally get a goblin in my collection. It just makes me so happy. But those, that the head sculpt is just so insane. And it does pop on nice. The only bad thing is that... You have the skin showing, so it doesn't really make sense. Now, of course, this wouldn't make sense anyways because he didn't wear it in the movie. But honestly, I think I like this head sculpt just a little bit more than the Willem Dafoe. I think I'll probably use this on my shelf. But yeah, that's insane. But now let's get into the elephant of the room. Where the frick is the extra hands, Hasbro? Where is the freaking extra hand? Like, it, I, it makes me so mad. That they didn't have extra hands with this figure. He should have came with two open hands. And then two fisted hands. I don't know why he didn't. Because now you can't really have him punching someone. Without him stabbing someone. And that gets into my other problem. I wish you could take off this. The blade piece. I just. I, it kind of annoys me. And it, they did use like a flimsy. Rubberly. Or plastic. So it, it, it like. It just kind of annoys me. It doesn't look all that great. But um. So I do wish that was detachable, and he should have came with extra hands and maybe, like, another pumpkin bomb. So you could have, like, two pumpkin bombs in his hands, like, while he's on the glider, like, ah, 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 ah. But I think that would be cool, but he does not come with it. So now, let's look at the glider. So taking the glider for a spin, this is a whole different story. This looks incredible. Like, this is huge, and I do have it on the stand. I forgot to mention this does come with a stand. And, um... Mine, I had to use a blow dryer to heat this up because it just would not pop in. So I would recommend heating the, the glider up with the blow dryer so that this could pop in. Because it just, for the love of God, it just wouldn't pop in. But you do get the nice purple paint over here. And then it's kind of casted in like a gunmetal-ish um, plastic. Either that or it's painted in gunmetal plastic. I'm not very sure. But it does look good. They should have painted these pumpkin bombs here. Because I think here is where like the pumpkin bombs would like go up. And you could catch them with your hand. And then throw them. But they didn't paint these. Which kind of sucks. But you do get the nice blades here. Which he stabbed himself with in the first movie. So nice blades. And then you do get two more blades on the ends of each thing. And the detail on this is just insane. Like... They put so much work into the sculpting of this. And then looking at the bottom, it's the same thing. If you can get this out the way, but it's the same thing. You've got the nice pistons, which we'll get into the articulation later. But uh, more like thruster looking things. And then speaking of thrusters, they did actually paint the thrusters green. Same with the um, exhaust things right here. Same with this. Like 
I guess you would call it that, exhaust, but they do look awesome. And then again, the pistons, and then, um, yeah, it looks good. You get some rockets here on the side. These don't actually come out or anything, but um, they're cool. You, you won't break these because they're rubbery, but yeah, that is really cool. So now, let's um, look at the articulation of the glider. So these things, which you saw me with these earlier, these actually, this is another accessory. I guess I could have included this with the accessory segment, but... This can pop into, that just fell, but this can pop into the um, glider just like that, so you can have him riding on it, that's how he'll ride, and it does actually have articulation, so you can move it side to side, and then obviously you could swivel it, which is good, and you can move the glider up and down, and I know see, some people have been moving it here, but I don't really want to test my luck and break it. Because it's like, it's very ratchety. Like, you can hear it clicking with each detent. And it just, I don't, it sounds like it's going to break. So, for mine, I'm not going to do that. Because I really don't want to break this glider. Because I want to have him displayed on this, on my shelf. But now, well, let's look at Goblin um, on the glider. Okay, so here is Goblin on the glider. It's fairly easy to get him on the glider but keeping him on the glider can be a little tricky when you're messing around with him like he does tend to like a little bit slip off the thing like it's not bad like it's only when you're like handling him like pretty heavily but like um he does look really good on the glider and um you can get him to stand with using utilizing the stand which this stand kind of sucks i wish they would update it and make a new stand but that's not gonna happen you know, but looking at him he does look awesome on the glider i really love this um the only thing that would have been better is if he had like sh either shin cut or boot cut not boot cut um like uh ankle ankle cut so you'd have like a cut right down here at the ankle because you can't get him into the best like crouching down poses without him like it, like it looking awkward like you'd have his legs like this and it looks like a duck so uh, you can't get him into the best poses on the glider just because he doesn't have the all the articulation that he needs which we'll get into the articulation i didn't forget it in just a second but yeah he does look good on the glider though so that's the thing i'm um excited about but you can't really angle the glider up without with him staying on it wait hold up this is my first time doing this actually does he Okay, so you can angle it up a little bit with him staying on it. So, I'm mis mistaken. You can angle it up just a little bit with him staying on it. But it kind of wants to go down because of the weight. But you can see, you can angle the glider up just a little bit. Um, if you want him to, like, be on the glider like that. But this figure is awesome. I think he looked really good on glider. Obviously, you saw it in the intro. Um, so, now, let's take a look at Goblin's articulation. Okay, taking a look at Goblin's uh, articulation, you can move the Goblin head up this far, um, this far down. So he can look down good, which is good because he flies, so you want him to look down at his characters and then or his enemies. And then you can, t and the Goblin head doesn't tilt, really. Like, yeah, it doesn't really tilt, which is bad because you want to have him like that, like like kind of scary look but you can't really do that because he doesn't have head pivot but um you can turn around the head obviously full 360 and it's the same pretty much the same thing with the norman head so i'm not going to show that but move, moving on into the arms you can move the arms above 90 degrees just a little bit you do get um i don't know why but mine kind of looks like it wants to pop the arm wants to pop off especially this one because like if i move it and then i try to move it down it gets like stuck here and it's, it feels like I'm gonna break it, but I have to like twist it and I have to like move it backwards. So it's kind of weird, but I think that might just be mine. But you do have um the uh thigh cut and then not thigh cut um bicep swivel and then double jointed knee, pinless knees, which uh, again this figure is pinless, which I love. So he does get good range there, and then he does have the um hands rotation, so that does look good. Swivel and hinge. And it's the same thing with the other arm. Moving on to the torso, though, this is where it gets a bit disappointing. So you can move this far forward, which is nothing. This far back, again, almost nothing. Uh, when I say nothing, he does move forward, but, like, this is neutral. 
this is forward. So, not that great. And then he does move back. Uh, it's a decent amount. And then he does get his swivel in the in the thing because there is no waist cut and there's no lower um, ab crunch, which sucks. He should have came with a lower ab crunch because, like, you could see, like, they had the perfect cut to do it right here. You would have the ab crunch, and I don't know why they do it. It almost looks like as if they planned on doing it because I don't think it would break up the sculpt all that much. Plus, the belt could be hiding it, so... And it kind of sucks, because you want him to get into that, like, crouching pose on the glider, but you can't really do that. But, um, yeah. Um, and then moving on to the legs, he can't kick, uh, this far up, but he does have drop-down hips. So if you utilize the drop-down hips, he can kick this far up, which is pretty good. He does have thigh swivel all the way around. You do get double-jointed pinless knees, which get a really good range. He can, in fact, kick his own butt. So there we go. And then moving on into the, again, no boot cut or boot cut or, um, what's it called? Oh, ankle swivel. He definitely needed this. But he does have ankle pivot, which does help a little bit. But, and then he does go this far down at the ankle and then this far up, which also needed because he needs to move his ankles on the glider. But that is the articulation. So now let's take a look at him, um, uh, some comparisons. Okay, starting off with comparisons, we have... The main man himself, Toby Maguire. And this is the No Way Home 3-pack version. Goblin just fell. But standing them up straight, you can see that Goblin is taller than Toby. So, um, I think that's pretty accurate. Um, I don't know, again, how accurate that is, but I'd say it's pretty good. And then, um, moving Tom Holland in here. And this is the integrated suit, again, from that No Way Home 3-pack. I think he stands up. Pretty, I'd say this, let me get this straight, but I'd say this looks pretty good. So this is, I'd say, is a pretty good comparison. Um, um, I, it does kind of feel like, again, I, it's not really Goblin's fault. It's really the Tom Holland figures, because I don't know why they made these so small. But, um, yeah, so getting integrated suit Tom out the way and Toby out the way. Here we have Andrew Garfield, and I know these ne these guys pretty much never really met. On the screen, which this is my favorite um, Spider-Man live-action figure. I don't know if he's my favorite Spider-Man figure, but definitely live-action. But there you have that comparison between them. So again, Goblin is taller. Um, now taking, moving, get this camera straight, please. Taking him out the way. Now we have another. This is a comic Spider-Man. So here we have the Amazing Fantasy Fifteen. There we go. So this is a pretty good, I'd say, because this is supposed to be like early Spider-Man, like teenage. So I'd say this is a pretty good comparison. So yeah, now let's take a look at him with uh, Tom Holland in the final swing suit. Which let me know if you guys want me to do a review on this figure because I was thinking about it. Um, it's a pretty good figure. Mine thankfully hasn't broken yet, but um, here we have goblin with tom and i know these guys never met in this costume at least but i think these look great together so you could see what i mean but like they made these toms like so small like they didn't increase the size all that much but they increased it like just a little bit with this new tom hall and so that is good and i think goblin compares pretty well to him so yeah that is the comparison for goblin and tom so, I think, um, oh, yep, got one more comparison in for you guys. Here we have the Mafex Spider-Man. So, if you haven't already, go check out that review. Um, that one, actually, I think is my most viewed review. So, it's pretty cool. But, I think these guys scale well together. I want to see the Peter, um, the Tom Holland's a little, but they're pretty much the same height. So, yeah, I think this scales very well together. So, you guys want to have these guys on your shelf fighting. I think this be a great, um, uh, like, uh, I guess, like, side in if you don't want to have the Marvel Legend. Like, I think that'd be a great, um, some, some, a Peter, a Spider-Man great to put with his Goblin. So, I don't know how else to say it, but... Yeah, so now let's look at my final thoughts. Okay, guys, so final thoughts about this figure. Do I think this is a good figure? Do I think you guys should pick this up? I know this review is a little bit late, might I add, but I think this figure is great. He's definitely going to be in my top 10 of the year, and that is still coming, guys. I did not cancel that. 
Uh, I am still working on the top 10, but I've got a lot of great figures to think about. And you might see, um, let's just say, you might see a couple of Spideys on that list. But, um, actually more than a couple. But, I did do a poll, if you guys wanted to go check that out on my community tab. Um, if I should put the Spideys in, uh, with the rest of the figures for the top 10, or should I just do a separate video? But you guys said put them in with the rest, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I do listen to you guys' um, polls and stuff in your comments, so that's why I do tell you guys to comment, because I do listen to them. But, final thoughts about the figure. I think this is great. Do I think it is overpriced? Yes. I think it should have been the same price as Doc Ock, and I feel like Doc Ock should have only been 30 bucks. But, um, I do think this figure is great, and I don't think they would have been able to do this in a regular release, which is why I understand they did it as a deluxe, but they should not have been $50, but... If you guys haven't found this figure, I actually got this, like, the day it came out. Uh, but I, it was a Christmas present, so I think this figure looks great uh, on the glider, especially, like, you could just see me. I'm having so much fun with this figure. I've been playing with him for days now, but I really do like this figure. Um, it, Again, he could have used some boot cut. He could have used extra hands, and I wish this blade thing was annoying, uh, was removable, because that is annoying. But I think it comes with a good enough accessories, and again, the head sculpt for Willem Dafoe is just incredible. And then same thing with that head sculpt. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for today's review, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube rigmarole. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.